You know, some people celebrate the end of the new year just by getting totally trashed and making a bunch of resolutions that they're going to break right away. I celebrate it by tracking acoustic guitar because I've got this cool new kind of song thing that I'm working on. So I'm just going to track it. And then I kind of want to talk about uh, how I'm doing this because this is kind of like a method and like a recording thing that took me a while to figure out. So I want to share with you guys. Let me know what you think because I think it sounds pretty good. So let's make some acoustic guitar music. All right, quick rundown of the gear we're recording with. Because this video is sponsored by none other than Sweetwater, my favorite sponsor of the year. This is a Taylor 614 Builders Edition. We're using this one specifically because I really like the direct out on this, which we'll talk about in a second. We have Stereo Neumann KM184 pencil condenser microphones, and those are all going into the Neumann MT48. So I've got left and right. And then also the DI is going into this. And uh, that's the entire setup. Let's hear what it sounds like. All right, so here's what we're dealing with here. It is a dad gad tuning. Because why wouldn't you? So it's gonna be kind of like a vibe you like. And uh, yeah, basically what we have is we have two Neumann KM184s. We're going to hear them solo, in stereo, pan left and right. And I also have the quarter inch output going from the Taylor Expression system, the uh, ES system. And the way I have this, I have the bass turned all the way up and uh, the treble at the high. So really, we're, we're going to hear all of them. We're going to hear them together. We're going to see what we did and see if we can make this sound really, really good. That's the goal. This is what you just heard. Okay, so we have pan left and right, those Neumanns, and then also the DI. Now, real quick, let's just do an experiment. This is what it sounds like. Let's just take the, the, the classic 12th fret microphone. This is just gonna be one single Neumann. <laughs> pencil condensers panned left and right. And then the real magic when we add the DI. And 
also here's just the DI by itself. So real quick, let's talk about how I mixed all of this stuff to make it sound good. There's barely anything on it. So I have both of the actual microphones going to a bus that only has the FabFilter Pro Q3. This is the EQ that you've probably seen every single mix engineer ever use because it's kind of like the best. I have this actually put on the acoustic guitar control, right? And so again, this is these are you know both of them together with it. Now the magic of this EQ, you can kind of see it working a little bit, right? The magic of this EQ is when you put it on this and the DI itself, okay? So now I have side by side the DI on the left and then both of the microphones on the right, okay? Now you'll see, as I said when I was actually recording it, I boosted the bass all the way up on the Taylor ES expression system, right? When I would play live, I would only have the DI, and there's nothing that I hate worse than the sound of the high end of a direct input line acoustic guitar, okay? It's probably the worst sound in the world. So I want to mitigate that as much as possible. I would do this live too. I would just take it and I would just zero it out, right? Because especially when you're in like a live performance, you have like a bunch of bodies in a room. This is going to eat up the low end. You're just going to be left with this high end and this is awful. So I really go overboard trying to get the lows and the mid range to kind of stick out. Now, an acoustic guitar sounding mix like this, the nice thing is, as you can see, I'm taking the high end, which I already had kind of cut on the way in a little bit, and I'm cutting it even more. When you see them both together, look for this. That little red band, because what you can do is you can overlay one of the EQs from the others. You can see where they're kind of competing, right? So that little red band around, you know, what is this, like 120 hertz or something like that, I'm cutting on the stereo mics. And also there's like other cutting kind of going on because that's the thing with like when you have two microphones going on, even if you pan them, there's gonna be some muddy like mid-range. That also is a Taylor 614. It's a brighter sounding guitar, but the beautiful thing about DI is that you get all of the low end but way tighter and less muddy, right? It's like a snappier kind of low end. So I have that boost even kind of like aggressively so, but it's a pretty simple boost, right? Now, after that, the only thing I have is I have both of them going into a compressor. This is just a Native Instruments compressor. You can see it just working a little bit. <laughs> That needle there is never ducking more than 4 dB. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm a pretty experienced like acoustic rhythm guitar player, so I feel like I'm playing it mostly the way I want, but it is just catching some of the peaks. You can even see just by looking at the waveform, it's not like perfectly all in there. There are some things that are a little bit louder than others, especially this is probably like the loudest part of the song too. So there's a little bit more of a dynamic here, but basically it's never, the needle's never doing more than 4 dB. It's just on all the tracks to kind of like glue them together a little bit. And then just a, a touch of reverb. This is like a pretty continuous track. This is just the Logic reverb right here. And you'll see. You can see that this, these are the frequencies that are affecting the reverb. I think one of the most underused things about acoustic guitar reverb is having some kind of uh, filter to not put a bunch of reverb on the low end part of the guitar because that's when it gets really boomy and muddy. I feel like this is like a pretty good example of uh, how I wanted it to sound. All of this is to taste anyways. Maybe you think it sounds horrible. Maybe you want something more, you know, analog sounding, whatever. I think this is a great example of how I would mix like a full frequency range of acoustic guitar where you can see the this the reverb isn't affecting any of the low end really. It kind of starts to creep up around like 600. You see a little bit of it. But it's cool because it gives you like a visual of what's actually happening. So I think, you know, I think it sounds pretty good. I do want to spend a second talking about how I got the the click track for this. I do not like recording acoustic guitars when you're using microphones to a metronome click track 
because I I don't know. Whenever I like hit the end of the song, I always hear that stupid little click bleeding in. No matter what headphones I use, I can never totally eliminate the problem. If it's like a, especially if it's like something finger style. So what I did is I made this track right here, which I think sounds actually like pretty awesome. Here's the, here's what this is what I tracked it to. Now what that is, this is a, a new plugin from Excellent Audio. Uh, it's called Life. You can also get this on Sweetwater. But basically what I did is I took a 12 string guitar and I just kind of played the whole thing into my phone. And then I can upload that into, I did a demo of this in a vlog the other day. And then essentially what you can do is you can bring it in to this plugin and this plugin makes a beat out of it. So here, if I, let's just, let's just solo the plugin. So this is the source. It's just called 12 string, right? Here's what here's what I sent to it. That's all I had, right? That was just kind of like I had an idea at a way different tempo on a 12 string on just my iPhone memo recorder. It puts it into here and then it comes up with a beat and you can add the kick there. make variations I I liked the previous one I like this one better because it's more of a vibe that isn't just a click track but it sits better uh, in the headphone mix with like less bleed and it has just more of a vibe that I can kind of track to so really big fan of this uh, life by excellent audio that might even make the, the end of the track if I you know when I finish it but at the very least, it's just kind of like very inspirational just to to track to. So again, you don't have to use it in the final mix, but super awesome creative tool. All this stuff is available on Sweetwater. Thank you so much to Sweetwater for sponsoring so many videos throughout the year. They're the, the absolute best. Please show them some love. Tell me, boy, Sean sent you because uh, we got a lot going on. So just to recap everything, we've got Taylor 614 going into stereo Neumann KM184 microphones into my Neumann interface, the MT48, which is ridiculous. And then I'm going into Logic. Plugins are just a FabFilter Q3, which is everybody should have that because it's like, you know, the most professional mixing tool that you could probably get if there's just one you had to pick. XLN Audio Life, uh, that reverb that I was using, that's actually just a stock Logic plugin. So, you know, good gear, but not like an insane like amount of stuff that I think just sounds sounds pretty good so thanks for watching let me get, let me know if you guys have any questions or different ideas of what i can uh, can record next and i will talk to you soon thanks a lot